I'm gonna sell it for these nails. Oh yes, hold on, I've got to share. Okay, so let's see this powder in action here. Like I said, these are the new wave gel formulated powders. So they're very buttery. They say it won't move until you move it. See that? With my monomer, it's a very nice consistency. You can just literally leave it right there. That'll stay. But. We're gonna wait until it dries a little bit. I don't wanna move this powder until it's like almost al dente, almost drying. Cause I don't, I wanna be able to drag it through smoothly without having any issues with um, the powder being thinner or thicker in certain areas. So the more dry it is, the easier you can do it. See that? Also, I wanna be able to sculpt my sides out to make it a little more square. Cause you know how the stiletto tips, I'm using my stiletto tips. Uh, the edge is gonna be a little bit more sharper, right? So. I'm able to utilize that to sculpt it to make it more square and coffin, as you can see. So a lot of times when you guys are using stiletto tips, of course, when you cut the tip, it's gonna have that little kind of like a sharp coming in like this, cause it's stiletto. So we, we have to be able to sculpt it and make it more taper, okay? If you don't, you don't do that, your nail is not gonna look stiletto anymore. It's not, it's not gonna be, uh, it's gonna be more of a, um, uh, what you call it, ballerina than a, a coffin, okay? It's gonna be my cuticle bead. Gives me a lot of time to work with it, flush the cuticles. Position my powder to when I bring it down the base of the nail. Give myself an apex. And I'm more of blending in right now. I don't want to move the powder too much because I want to leave the majority of it where the apex area is. That's where it's going to protect my natural nail base. So you have a nice transition from the cuticle area here, outward, see that? And this is like a long, not even XL, so you don't really need that big of an apex. A lot of times people just wanna just slam a huge chunk on there, you don't really need that much. Remember the apex, I saw a post earlier, someone posted that um, a client slammed their finger on a door and it, it broke and she's like, why did it break? You know, like, I use C curve tips, it shouldn't apex, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, people are confused. Apex is not meant to make your nails invincible. It's the only time the apex even plays a role in the nail is when the nail breaks. So if your nail doesn't break, the apex has no purpose. The purpose of the apex is to protect the, the client's natural nail bed so it doesn't have that break into the, uh, the natural nail bed and have that bloody finger. So ideally, you know, any nail can break. It's just a matter of how it breaks. And a lot of nail techs think that if they have a proper, uh, if they put a lot of powder, thick, where every apex, that the nail's supposed to be invincible. No, it's not, guys. Nothing's gonna stand up to a door being slammed on a nail, okay? Sometimes you even pick up uh, a, laundry, a laundry basket wrong, the wrong way, the nail catches on it and it just breaks. Those are nice, clean breaks, and you should be thankful that it breaks right at the free edge. Anytime that your nail breaks, or a client takes a picture and sends it to you, it shows that the nail is broken. That means, oh yeah, you should tell the client, yep, it's because we have a proper apex, that's why it broke like that, Unless, or else it would have broken right into your natural nail bed, you had a bloody finger. Educate them, so they know. 
Good afternoon, Tony. How are you? Oh, thank you, Christy. So where are you guys watching from? Where's everybody watching from? So yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to do a live where I talk about Apex again, because I've done it before. And I feel like um, this generation, I'm gonna switch to these two, okay? okay? I feel like this generation of nail techs right now are very confused. The new nail techs coming in, what the purpose of Apex is for and what it is there for. So, you know, it's, it's not, we are, <laughs> And then you, they're they're like hurting themselves because they they think they're doing something wrong and not, or they're just too focused on positioning the powder and just to make sure that they have a nice bulge when they realize that the apex is more than just a piece of acrylic that's bulging from the nail. It has structure, the proper placement of everything in the nail, and every length of the nail is different. the The client's nail beds are different. So to place a proper apex is not just, oh, um, the same length every nail that you're going to place the same apex. No, because not every client has the same size nail bed. You guys understand? That means that you have to place it where you can protect the free edge. You can't just position it in the same spot just because it's the same length. What's worse than an improper apex, uh, uh, no apex, an improper apex. You place an apex in the wrong spot, you're asking for trouble. Nice coffin shape. And for this one, we're gonna do um, flowers. These two. I think a nice. Hmm. I'm trying to see what kind of flowers be nice here. I really like these pink ones. No, I need more light. Oh, here we go. I'm gonna break the petals up though. dry flowers. I'm just gonna rip these up. And these. Nice. They'll go well with it. So I have these flowers here. These little ones, I'm just gonna tear them up a little bit. Just get, I just want, I want the little stems. It's been a while since I've done a flower encapsulation set. It reminds me, I re got re I gotta restock my um, flower kits. So for these ones, I'm gonna just take, since her nails are so small, I'm just gonna take the petals, the flower petals out. Give them a little bit petal look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an ombre to clear. What this does is this creates, gives me the ability to cover up the nail line. One of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of people do when they do clear encapsulation is they don't cover up this nail line. It makes no sense, guys. You have to cover that up, please. Just to have that clear look that you want when you put the clear cap on, okay? Even my students, sometimes they post, I'm like, well, guys, you need to cover up this nail line. This right here, you don't want to see. If you see you blend it like that, you'll have that nice clear look, right? I'm just gonna go and fill in this area. Sure, because later I'm gonna cap this with clear, so I wanna make sure I get everything nice and blended in. Even the tip line. See? 
Now everything's all nice and blend in. And be able to add my flowers. Flower petals. I'm going to add this little bit of glitter in here. The rose gold glitter has big flake, small flake. And this will be encapsulated later. Look how pretty that looks. This actually came back in the stock. They come with big flakes, small flakes, and foils in there. So there we go. That's my first encapsulated now. And we're going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to take a little bit of powder. Just going to make sure I cover the cuticle up. Because remember, we're encapsulating with clear later. If we don't do this early, it's going to show through. And I'm just going to lightly just blend downward. It's going to be like a... You see how I still see that nail line? So i got to build a little bit more, okay? Work slow in this, guys. You don't have to rush during this process. That nail lines cover, we're good to go. It's actually a very fun set. Um, you can do this very easily. A lot of times, people overwork themselves and they overthink this type of set. And then when they see it, they think, "Oh, it's like a lot this net now." It's all has to do with acrylics. And once you master like the control of the acrylics, even the blending of this this uh, this nail right now, it's very simple. You know, I'm just I'm just lightly blending it forward and I'm dusting out. I'm using my brush to get rid of any excess pigment at the tip to give it a clear look. So it has kind of an ombre to clear look, like that. Later I would encapsulate with clear, it's gonna look really nice, it's gonna show through a little bit. And ideally if her nail bed was longer, I would be able to cover up with flowers and this and that, but it's not. So we <laughs> gonna make do. So I'm gonna actually lay the flowers now. Same positioning as I did. Oh, so did the other one. I really like these red petals because they actually give a little bit of a touch to it. And all this little pink that matches that other pink right there, but it's gonna be my outlining. Then I'm gonna add my glitter, just a little bit. Lace it in here. Cause later on, when the reason I have the glitter at the tip is because when I let it out and encapsulate with clear, this is gonna show up to party. And I'll put some right out over the rose here. Mmm, that's pretty, isn't it? Hello, everybody. Hello, Edgar. Love the color? Yes, this is Perfect Peach by Wave Gel. You can get this at wavegelshop.com. You can get some promo code now, Dad. You been in the fancy studio? Yeah, show me, taking pictures and show me, Tania. How buttery that acrylic. Yes, um, this is uh, Barbie. This is a new, the, the new formula they have. It's very buttery. I'll show you guys right now. Let's do a, let's tr a big bead here. Why don't you place this acrylic down here? push the acrylic where you need to go. And the thing is, a lot of times these kind of acrylic, 
as buttery as it is, people actually scare that it won't dry. But this actually, this acrylic dries. So there's a lot of companies that have acrylic like this, but it won't dry, so you have to cap it with clear. Um, unlike this, um, Wave Gel is actually perfected where they don't need to do that. So that actually is very helpful for a lot of you guys. Now we don't have to actually go through a clear process every time we use color powder. I used to get asked that question a lot. Hey, do you use, do you cap your color powder with clear? And I'm like, I don't think I do that. And I'm, I, at first I was wondering why people keep asking me that. Then I realized that um, it's actually very common, I guess, people actually do that. second bead here. One of the biggest mistakes when doing the second bead is everybody, they just drag the whole powder from top to bottom. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to drag only half the bead because, oop, that glitter is getting into the brush. You want to leave behind the majority of the powder with the apex areas, okay guys? Very common and very easy mistake to make. Everybody does it, even my students in my classes. Man, I can't believe I'm leaving this weekend for Vegas already. And then we have our one last West Coast class, San Jose. Those of you guys in the San Jose area, I want to take that class. Me, Tino, and, and, uh, and Vina. That's our last, see? That's our last um, West Coast class. Man, can't believe we announced three West Coast classes and it's almost two down already. Oh, thank you, kitty. Hey, Jasmine, how are you? Hey, Corinne. Here we go. Um, I'm actually gonna cap this nail right now just so it dries. So remember these two nails that we did, guys? We have to cap the whole thing, okay, with clear. Any clear would work. I use like a supply store clear. I don't really have a difference with clear because I think all clear, for me personally, are the same. Um, as long as you know how to use it. Um, if you have issues using clear, it's probably because you're um, either, like you're not controlling it enough. The more you work with it, the more you'll bubble, okay? So be careful with clear. But if you have proper control of clear, it works really well, just all the same, because clear powder is clear powder. Yes, there's different grades of clear, but as, at this point, we're not doing a whole clear nail, so we're not looking for like a high grade clear that'll cost more or be hard to work with. The higher the grade of the clear, the more runny it is. So, and then it also depends on your monomer also. And this time, we're just using a clear to cap, so we don't really need like a crazy clear, but it's more, it's really important for me not to have any bubbles. So I'm working slow and I make sure that I don't touch the clear too much. And cap everything. And that's just my first cap. I think I'm gonna need to come back up and build some more structure. You see how it's a little bit thin, right? But now that I know that everything is sealed in, back through and give do the structure of it the placement bead where the apex is I make a certain with sealing everything in making sure everything stays in now I can take my time and build my structure clear is probably the worst powder you can work with because you know why it gets stuck in your brush so easily you guys ever realize anytime you guys have been using color acrylic you'll be fine and all of a sudden you switch over to clear acrylic and your brush is just like absorbing this acrylic You're like what's going on it's because clear acrylic is essentially all acrylic when we use colored acrylic there's pigment in there mixed in there so it's not going to be as um it's not going to get stuck on the brush as much so whenever you're using clear make sure you clean your brush very well before you, you store it because that clear will be in your brush and i'll show you guys later when i finish here like that now i built my structure Oh, that's so pretty. That's it, my first bead. I'm gonna use it to cover the nail to make sure I seal everything in. And I wanna have to, I don't have to worry about building structure and, 
and then covering the nail and sealing everything in. So I'm gonna take it in two steps. There's no rush. The worst powder you can rush with is clear. <laughs> it's runny, it bubbles. The last thing you wanna do is start rushing around with it. Take your time, make sure you apply it correctly, get in all your crevices. My main goal is sealing in these glitters without having any any issues with the um, bubbling. Clean my brush. Okay, everything is sealed in. Build a little bit of structure, see that? I'm gonna be able to sculpt this, make sure it's nice and square, like so. Because this is semi-dry, moldable, manipulatable. Powder control, powder manipulation is very important skill to have. It gives you the ability to sculpt, make something out of nothing. Yeah, I'm just gonna slowly keep molding until I get that nice shape that I want. That'd be like my form. Let's finish it off with some structure. push the powder to the middle and if you do get bubbling you can also use a brush to just pat it out pop it whatever you want to call it it's gonna blend it in so I don't have to do too much work later so cleaning your brush and getting a monomer another big mistake the nail techs do when they clean their brush they go in the monomer, they don't get rid of the monomer. They leave it wet and they come back up to the powder. What happens then? Adding more, you're adding more monomer to the powder and it becomes more and more runny. Look at this, guys. I just really sculpted out this nail. And now it's nice and coffin. Voila. One hand down. <laughs> class in Georgia. We just did our class in Georgia, I think, last month. Um, that Georgia, Atlanta was our last class um, for East Coast before we went for West Coast. So um, after that, we, we left for uh, Denver, which we just finished. And then we're going to be going to uh, Vegas this week for the Vegas class. And then San Jose is our last class in the West Coast. And then we'll come back to East Coast with the master class, y'all. You come back with the master class. So basically the master class is gonna be focused on new trending designs, the harder designs, master level designs. Um, a lot of our students that have been taking our classes over here, the beginner advanced class in East Coast, um, they've you know gotten to the point where they are ready for that so in that class we won't be doing any hands-on with the acrylics but we will be having demos for the acrylics and we'll be showing how to you know build you know apex again and some different type of shapes like lipstick design lipstick shape or even russian shape something like that and we demo for the students to watch because they have the skill to just watch and be able to replicate that and then we'll be showing all designs so basically all acrylic designs um, we won't be having them do application or anything like that, like two beading or something like that. We assume they should have that down. But we'll show them how to do like uh, acrylic designs. And then we'll, be, we'll have more time to do more designs. So the mask class is more design focus and technique focus. Um, building proper technique for certain designs that require you to be able to, you know, do certain things. Um, a lot of the designs in the art portion is going to require like 10 steps, which is like a very advanced compared to, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys have probably never done a design where you have to do 10, 10 steps to finish. It sounds redundant or it sounds kind of, uh, I don't want to be deal with that, but it's good to know. And that's what, that's what, that's still the designs that you see on those Instagram posts that you're like, wow, that looks amazing. Yep, that's where that comes from. 10 
10, 20 steps. It sets you, sets you aside from other nail techs. Um, it gives you that boost, you know. And there's a lot of nail techs that are ready for that and they want to learn that. So that's why we'll find the master class coming soon. I know there's a lot of people who've been waiting. Nail techs have just been waiting for the design portion, two days of the design portion. I'm gonna shape my nail here. Can you take your weather back? <laughs> hey, you guys should be happy. You guys should be happy. Yeah, this one I'm gonna do these two. Yeah. So you guys, you guys should be happy. In Oregon, 100, 100 degree weather, that's more Arizona than us. Arizona is that. You guys complain about all the rain and snow now? Edgar, you think that design in a... Uh, that design in uh, Denver that that we did, the last one we showed, that was one of the most... That's the, that's the more advanced design. But there's uh, designs that are more even more advanced than that. Can you believe that? Yeah. So that's why we need more two days for design for the master class. We're just going to focus on design. We're going to make sure that everybody executes. And plus, you know, the master class, you know, we're going to assume you know, have some some design experience, intermediate level at least, and they'll be able to get you. And plus, we have a new teaching style. Um, we develop, and Tino and I and Vina, we talk about how, how to get the students to be able to learn these designs, someone that's never done it before, and get it down. So we have this new style where uh, we're doing now in class to teach the design, and it's, it's so far it works really well. Um, we did it with our um, beginner and advanced class, and it worked well. So I think I think for a uh, for a, a master class, students that have the like you know some prior experience with the designs, um, they'll be able to actually really really grasp it really well. And I can't wait because um, there's so many designs that we teach that are just you never even seen on the market before, and there's products that we've came up with ourselves to, to to create these designs. I always want to be the first one to do something, you know? That's why um, the students that are going to be learning from their master class, they're going to be the first ones to do these designs. We got a few new ones that we've developed. Ooh, that's it. Sign you up, Edgar. I, I hope to see you there, Edgar, because um, it's gonna be East Coast too, so it'll be easy for you. I, Edgar, you really had the um, you had the natural talent for that because you your Earth design was one of the best ones. Well, it was the number one one from Denver to achieve that level your first time. Uh, we're actually, actually, I was actually really impressed when I saw. It. I was like, wow, good job. That's why it's like you never know. There's so many people that are so talented out there. You never know when they come out and they're like, oh wow. So it's so nice to travel around different states and see nail techs in different areas because you never know. Some students never knew they can do something until they actually do it. Proper guidance. But definitely we're going to be a little bit more strict with the master class because we're going to assume everybody can do it. We're not going to be able to like, you know, hold your hand because we have a lot of designs to teach. So we're gonna go through them as you know efficiently as possible. So basically, once the technique adjustments are taught, these students should be able to grasp it and master it. That means that after that class, you should be able to go home, pop that design onto your client, and your clients can be like, "Wow, what is this?" There are certain designs in acrylics I've never even shown on lives before. Some things we gotta save for our students, <laughs> for our class, exclusive. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and finish these off with these flowers here. Do the same process here. We're going to be able to put the peachy nude. 
Cover the nail line up, blend it down. See it lightly blend it down. While this is still wet, that's when we're going to be applying. I'm going to do the reverse, the reverse of the other side, okay? We don't want to have it come down the same, the same direction, okay? Always have it come down the reverse from the other direction. And this set looks is very simple. I actually love doing this, you know, back in the summertime. Uh, these sets are so easy to do and had some dry flowers and some glitters, just a nice shaping and wow, it just it just stands out. These are the sets that when you know you post on your Instagram, the clients go, like, "Oh, I like that. I want that." And you know it's simple to do. It's not going to take you long. Yes, the process of doing the acrylic part is long, but afterwards you don't have to paint. All you do is put a top coat on it. You don't have to really do much, right? Encapsulation, ombres, all oh, just has to do with your ability to work with the powder. You know, very simple designs that you'll be able to do and make easy, easy money. Such easy money. Flowers, fill these in. When the taco hits, it's like the beat drops. too much glitter I want to kind of have it kind of see through also okay you don't want to cover too much of this with glitter okay I'm gonna put away this peachy color 73 perfect peach and I'm definitely put away my glitter just in case this is back in stock on my website, um, netashop.com. It comes in 12 colors. It comes in a kit, so. I'm gonna clean my brush real quick before I start any working with this clear. I'm gonna give myself a little a different, um, for a fresh monomer. Sometimes when you work with clear, if you have like monomer that's been contaminated, you see how it was like really murky, it's gonna cause bubbling, okay? So, we are gonna give ourselves some fresh monomer and finish off strong here. So if you have issues with your clear being sticky, something like that, that's probably because your monomer is contaminated. And fresh monomer will be able to keep you from having bubbling issues. Is that different this bead is picked up now with a fresh monomer? like that and I'm gonna keep the bead there as long as I can I'm gonna keep positioning it move it when I'm ready see that when I'm when it's ready I move it slowly it comes down evenly guys look at that imagine if I try to move it earlier it's gonna be all dripping all over the place no rush do not rush with clear clear is like your girlfriend or your wife that's getting ready to go out 
You can't stand there and be like, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? Because the more you do that, the more longer she takes. I guarantee you. Sometimes you just got to crack a beer, sit down, watch a show or something like that. And when they're ready, they're ready. That's what clear is like. The next thing you want to do is rush clear it will bubble i guarantee you i put a little bit more here there's a little bit of divot here but i have a nice a little bit much there you go just need that much right there There's still a little dip here because I kept moving the powder too early. That's fine. I'll be able to remedy that. It's a little bit more acrylic. I don't know why I did, I did that. I put the acrylic here just to fill in this dip, but when I went and moved it. So I'm going to leave it here a little bit longer. This comes on up. And there we go. Next nail. I'm gonna do a bigger bead just to speed this up. No more two bead process. Fold it in. Keep the powder in the middle area. Don't worry about that. I can just draw that off later. Just a little bit of the flower stem. Keep folding the powder in. The moment it starts moving to the side, you know that it's ready to move. That's my rule of thumb. When you see the powder stop trying to droop to the side, you know it's time. The powder is ready to move. It means that I can move the powder slowly and I'll be able to create a nice, even consistency throughout the nail, especially when it comes to the clear. Of course, I'm gonna have to drill and file this one a little bit more later, but that's fine because I have to cap the whole nail. I trust the process. This the dam right there is from the flower. I'll be able to just move that later. Okay, and we're done with the application process. Let's clean our brush because you know clear beats the shit out of our brush. I'll show you guys. You guys see that? how the, the bristles are stuck together. It means there's acrylic residue in here. That's from the clear, you see that? And you may think, oh, that's nothing. Yeah, but when it's wet, it's nothing. When it's dry, it turns into acrylic. So you gotta really get that out. For a lot of you guys that are getting your brushes messed up, you don't know why. It's because the outside may look clean, but the inside is not. So just monomer, I consistently push, 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 because they're just little tiny particles that not haven't dried it together yet. So when you feather through like this, and you feel the bristles kind of separate really nice like that, you'll know that there's no more acrylic in there. Then you'll be able to retrain your brush and store it the way you want it. See? But see how much different this is than when I first did it? It only took you a few seconds. 20 seconds, 30 seconds, do it guys. Clean your brushes, take care of them. They should last you years. My brush is crimped, so I'm gonna train it how I want it to stay the shape. And it'll stay like that. Somebody's drilling or in the back that I've got 15 texts drilling right now. Don't worry. It's a nail salon. <clears throat> <laughs>
somehow it's our trailer. So, let's do this here. We're gonna do some shaping. Should be fairly easy since I already shaped my acrylic. We're just gonna clean up underneath any excess. It's important to switch sides. Don't stay too long while filing. The longer you file, the worse your shape gets. Remember that. Yes, the more filing gets a better crisp shape, but the more you shape, the more you move. You can't add acrylic on. That took me about less than a few seconds, maybe 10, 15 seconds to get that shape nice and crisp. Because you should have your shape already there from your application. All you gotta do is go through and make it more crispy, that's it. Clean up and underneath any excess powder that's underneath. That's all you need to do. Put sides. Create symmetry. That was exactly 15 seconds, y'all. See that? You didn't know how to clean my brush until I showed you? Oh, there you go. That's one of the reasons why I'm here. These videos, just, not just nails, it's how to maintain your brush. That's, you know what? That's just so sad that you had, that you said that. I don't understand why there's no content on how to take care of your products and tools. There should be. Mm. But I'm glad you found me, and I'm glad you know how to clean your brushes now. And this is the clearer one, so I'm gonna have to put a little bit more work with this one. Cause now that I have to cap the hole now, but it should be easy. Maybe the size it a little bit, not too much. The moment I go past a certain amount of times, I'm gonna move on. Cause it's very easy to sit there and keep filing, keep filing, keep filing. And before you know it, your coffin is now no longer a coffin. It's going this way, that way every way but the way you want it to go. And then all the excess powder, of course, we probably have some from the clear dripping in the bottom. You should do one of your two. Um, I, I have one. Um, actually, I have a video I posted. I'm gonna look for the video in my, my, my uh, library where I, I show how to clean brushes. Because I have those videos up for um, on nail-shop.com. Uh, now that I shop um, Instagram for who to buy brushes to know how to take care of them, prep them, and also take care of them. So I'll probably, probably find the video again. I'll, I'll post it up again. It's very informative. My YouTube, I have a different plan for my YouTube. I'm going to do like a kind of a video log of when I travel and teach classes, and then I'll post it on YouTube. I think that's what I'm going to use my YouTube for. Because I already have, I have Instagram, and I have Facebook for tutorials. I'll, I'll still probably do some tutorials on YouTube, but right now it's hard for me to do content because I'm living. But now I have a team that's gonna do a lot of live content for uh, with me, so then I'll be able to supplement some of my time with some video content. You know, you can't do everything, guys. Like at the end of the day, like trying to balance all the social media is is crazy. It takes up a lot of time, a lot of time, guys. <laughs> Don't try to do everything. Focus on what you, you, where you're, you're strongest, your platform strongest. That's why I'm always on Facebook because my platform strongest here. So I can reach more of my followers and people that need me here. And I'll have time to supplement to my other platforms. A lot of people try to do everything. I'm like, no way. You need like a whole team for that. You see? Yeesh. Make sure everything's even though. Cuticle to cuticle, just a little bit longer.
And there we go. And there we go. I think if you want to see that video, it should be on Nail That Shop Instagram. It's Nail That Shop. I got so much new stuff coming, it's crazy. The next couple of months is going to be very important for the platform. You guys are going to see a lot of new things. I appreciate all the support. Monomer will be restocking. Thank God. I just got news. Whew. I was hoping that, I hope it wasn't for like a month. Like we're running out Monomer for a month. Cause it... People need their Monomer. Honestly, you, the filing is the, should be the, the quickest process of the nail, doing the nail. Yet, I find that people tell me that they spend 20, 30 minutes shaping with this hand filer. You're spending 20, 30 minutes shaping with a hand filer, you're definitely gonna, you're overdoing it, you're over filing. Be careful, okay guys? Give yourself some time, time yourself. Let's just say one minute per nail. So 10 minute per hand, okay? So after a minute, just stop, move on to the next finger. Because sometimes it is easy to get lost in what you're doing. You know, you just keep filing, 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 filing. And before you know it, you've over, you, you overdid it. Yes, I've done it myself, so I know. A lot of times I tell you guys this stuff doesn't mean that I'm, I'm like, I, I've made the mistake myself in the past. you from previous experience I'm not being high and mighty either <laughs> I'm always willing to admit my flaws you know, their flaws is where, where progress is it gives you the ability to see where you need to work on and you're to do your progression there You don't know, but her, her hand is part of the hardest hands to work with. She has such crooked fingers. It's crazy. But I'm up for the challenge. It doesn't matter how crooked the client's finger is, as long as you position the, the, the tips to the, the straightest finger, everything will fall in line. Lovely. This is some cuticle work. This is my five and one, sharp. You gotta be careful with this. But this is my favorite bit to use my uh, Yes, I've taught you guys how. If you've been in my class, you, you, I've taught you how to work with crooked fingers. 
to make it look perfect when you take pictures. At the end of the day, the picture is all that matters. This is very important. Mm, for beginners, I recommend using a fine. Medium is a little bit more gritty, and the only reason why I say that is because um, you don't want to have too much pressure on the drill bit and then accidentally eat up too much of the keto acrylic. So the more gritty the 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 e file. Sorry, I froze. I, it was in low battery mode. Apologies, guys. Ran, ran out of battery a little bit. A lot of you guys want to get faster doing nails. Don't think about getting faster. Get think about getting more efficient. When you become more efficient, your quality gets better and your speed gets better. Sometimes getting faster, you, you, you'll sacrifice quality. That's not a good sacrifice, okay? Just to get a couple minutes faster? No, that's not a good sacrifice at all. Become, when you have this mentality, you want to become more efficient with how you do your nails. You want to be able to utilize the time properly, you know? That will increase your speed, your whole set experience altogether, okay? Did you guys see that? Just using a different word from getting faster to being more efficient. Makes sense, right? This is my sharp bit, so I'm able to go right in between the cuticle area and the acrylic. I'll flush it down to make sure that when this scrolls out, won't have any issues with the lifting. The lift, where's the lift come from, guys? From the key to go area, right? I'm seriously gonna get back to doing the Q and A's at night, guys. I'm sorry, I'm so busy. I miss interacting with you guys with the Q and A's. I promise you, it's gonna be back. It will be back. I miss drinking wine too. How about that? <laughs> I still drink wine. Just when I when I do it during the Q and A, I drink more. <laughs> This bit was actually a, a really a, a hot seller, still a hot seller. The, the medium and the, the, uh, the fine. A lot of people like the medium more because a lot of them, they like to break down acrylic faster. So, but the fine is good enough for me because I don't really have a lot of bulk and my acrylic's really smooth. But if you have, you know, your application is not, it's, you're still working on your application, then yeah, use the medium. It's the same thing, it's just a little bit more grittier to be able to break down more acrylic. Look at that, guys. blend out this, these edges right here right here this is very important a lot of times you guys leave these you guys leave these too wide you need to bring it in okay last thing you want to do is have it pop up when you take pictures right here this corner here i see a lot of it just too wide too bulky bring it in bring it in Um, these are the ones I did my clear, okay?
clear one. So I gotta take, spend a little bit more time because the clear was a little bit more bulky. But there you go. Nice and easy. Then cuticle work is really not that hard to do. Very simple. Repetition, same technique over and over and over. Just have a lot of control of your drill bit. And yes, you will cut the client. You know, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's okay. I'm saying it's, it happens. It still happens to me. I still do it till this day, okay? No one gets past cutting clients. So if you're afraid to cut a client, then definitely the wrong profession, a wrong tool for you to use. But definitely a tool you need to use. Once you get past that, like, oh, okay, I'm sorry I nicked you, you'll learn from it. If I tell you right now that even me at my level still cut clients, what makes you think, you know, that you, you're cutting a client? Should be a normal thing, right? I have 15 years of experience, I still cut a client. You have, maybe you're starting out, you don't have experience yet. So it should be normal that you cut in clients. But learn from it. Don't be traumatized by it. I see a lot of nail techs get traumatized by it and they never touch the e-foul again. <laughs> I know the feeling, trust me. I'm not saying go out there and start cutting clients. I'm saying just when it happens, it happens. Apologize, clean, sanitize. Do all the proper steps to make sure there's no infection and all that. Then move on. I gotta be careful when I'm in this area of the nail. Don't curl up into a ball in the corner and... What tool you use just smooth out the acrylic where it's not bulky? Um, you can use a sanding band bit, or you can use a hand filer or a buffer, or you can use a fine bit like this. You, even if it's not bulky, you can still run through it softly. Just don't put a lot of pressure and you'll be able to smooth it out. See what I'm doing right now? I'm slowly, slowly working in circular motion because my drill bit is a circular drill bit. Uh, it's a cross cut. It's, it's made, this is why I want it made differently from other bits. Yeet. Yeet. I tell you right now, I did a manicure on her before I had to start because she had so much cuticle and her had never was small. So yeah, her cuticle is a little sensitive, so I have to be very careful. There you go. Mm -hmm. Else, the very application, the less work you gotta do. The curl is very smooth, you really don't gotta put any pressure on there. You just gotta run the drill bit over and just smooth everything out. All the, the rough edges, rough corners. Pretty simple, really. Sometimes I barely even have to drill the, the base of the nail because it's so smooth. Sometimes when it's so smooth, the more you put the drill on, the more actually uneven you make it. So I try to stay away from it as much as possible. And then just, just do my cuticle area, seal in my cuticles and move on, you know? There you go. Get one hand down. I really can't wait to put top coat on those. Mm -hmm.
Same thing. Usually you guys see me hand file. Sometimes I get really lazy. I don't want to hand file at all. I just go through and do everything with my e-filer. Such a useful tool for nail tech. I feel like if the e-filer never came along, we'd be in trouble. We'd take forever to do full sets. I wouldn't be able to do the whole, and there'll be a lot of lifts too. The ability to do this won't exist. That's for sure. to go to Cut City. matters when you're working if you have a really like if there's a lot of uneven surfaces you make sure your speed is matching your uh how you're working it can cause the bit to bounce or get caught So you have to do a little bit more work because that's just fine. It's so pretty. See a lot of people leave it, so it's really wide here in the pictures. It does not look good. Simply just use your drill bit, hand file, or whatever you have to do, and just drill it down a little bit, okay? 
We don't want this area on the nails to be wide. filing but most of the time I like e-filing a little there it's just more quicker the hand file does have its usage advantages I do need a new bit probably this bit is nice and seasoned I might use this bit as a giveaway or something during one of my classes for a student that does a good design because this is actually a like a perfect for like anybody that starts to do cuticle work. I already seasoned it. Like it's over a hundred sets. But look how sharp it still is. But it's not sharp enough to cut. But it, I need a little bit sharper. Maybe I'll take this to my class and do a giveaway for one of the students. And now an actual bit that now that's used over on a hundred sets. Maybe I do that every hundred sets. I, I switch out my bit. <laughs> it's actually worth a lot. These seasoned bits, people want it because using a brand new bit is hell. Okay, let's finish up here. Have her wash her hand, top coat. touches just in case we lost any shape I always you should do this every time you finish before you do buff and wash the hands just do this really quick you never know it could increase your shape by what two three percent worth it it's like a final quality control check okay you never know those edges maybe got lost during drilling life of a perfectionist when it comes to being a nail tech all right Buff. 
try not to buff off these nice crisp corners I just did. Wash your hands. I gotta start packing for my class, y'all. Mm. So I'm gonna use my no wipe top coat. This is money back guaranteed. Right, one of the best top coat I've used. If you don't like it, you can send it back. Maybe it'll, it'll bring luck. <laughs> you maybe never know. But I think on next class, I'm, uh, I think probably, I'm gonna probably have to retire that drill bit. Not retire, but like pass it down to a student or something like that uh, in class. I do like mine a little bit sharper, but you know, it's been through a lot of sets this bit. Look how nice it still is though. The sharp is still there. I don't know. It's still good. I don't know. So this is, this is where we finish off with that nice no cleanse top coat. This is like a medium consistency. Is you know it clears UV LED. And here we go. Let's see the final touches. And you don't need a thin coat. It's a very thin coat. And, and it won't make you lose your shape either. Because the top coat itself just stays. And here's, this is the moment of truth. <laughs> hello spring, hello flowers, hello glitter. Hello, look at that. Woo. I told you that finger will show up. Mm, the link's in there, Gene. It's nail-shop.com. The link's in the pinned comment below. You can just click it and it'll send you right there. You can go to my Instagram, go to my bio, and there's the link to the shop also. You see, I don't have to wipe the sides because this is a medium top coat. It won't move. As in, it'll just coat and it won't move. It won't move to the corners, the edges, no matter how I lean and tilt the client's hands, okay? I don't need one thin coat of it. Thinner the better. One drop it, one thin coat. There you guys are. Thank you guys kindly for all the support, being here, joining me for this set.
nice and shiny. Money back guarantee. Just pay for shipping, ship it back, and I'll take care of it. If you don't like it. Look at the shape. You want the top coat. It's shiny. You don't lose the shape at all. Okay, guys. I love this color. It's perfect peach.